Hey everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the application of calculus derivatives to the position, velocity, and acceleration function. I know we've talked about that before, but today we're going to see it in the curves. So let's look at the position functions curve, velocity functions curve, and the accelerations curve and see what we can determine from them. So a particle is moving along a horizontal coordinate line, positive direction being to the right. So translation, you have a straight road. Okay, you have, we're going to label it with numbers, so let's put zero somewhere. And then we have the positive direction, and we have the negative direction. All right, uh, so there's our function s of t. Notice t has to be greater than or equal to zero. This is not t. This is our position, so position zero. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out what position we're at when t equals zero, and we'll mark that as our starting point. Find the velocity and acceleration and describe the motion of the particle. So let's start by finding velocity and acceleration. So if s of t is equal to 2t cubed minus 14t squared plus 22t minus 5, how do we find the velocity? Remember, velocity is the first derivative of your position function. So take the derivative, 6t squared minus 28t plus 22, and acceleration is the first derivative of velocity or the second derivative of position. We've talked about this a couple times. So derivative would be 12t minus 28. All right, now those are your functions. If you were to graph each of these functions, you would end up with these three curves here. This is our position function, s of t. Our velocity function, v of t, and our acceleration function, a of t. Notice, each time you take the derivative, the degree decreases. So for position, we had a cubic polynomial, we had a uh, parabola, because it's t squared, and then a straight line. So those are your three functions. Now, what can we do with this information? Well, from the graph, we can get some interesting information. For example, the position function here, this is going to be our t value on the x-axis, is actually going to be our time. For the position function, we know that time starts at zero. So zero is right here. So this is our starting point. So the rest of this does not exist. In terms of mathematics, it exists, but in terms of reality, you can't go with a negative time. So this is our starting point. So what does that mean? At t equals zero, we start at like negative, well, this is negative 10, so that's, we'll just call it negative 4, we'll just make the dot a little bigger. Let me translate that into my straight line. So at negative 4 position, we are at the starting point. This is where we start. t equals 0 at negative 4. Now, according to the position function, we then, as time changes, we move until we get here in the positive direction. So we go from negative 4 to negative 2 to 0. 2 to 4 to maybe 5. So those are our position values. So let me put it in a picture here. So we might start at negative 4, but we move in the positive direction until we hit what time? This time is about, we'll say 1. So at t equals 1, we stop moving in the positive direction. Then we start moving in the negative direction. So at, from position, what do we say, 5-ish? We start moving in the negative direction. We go negative, 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 and we go even further negative than where we started. We go all the way to negative, uh, let's see, 10, 12, maybe negative 14. So in our position function, or on our horizontal line, we change directions and we start going the other way. We go back this way, all the way to like negative 14, not drawn to scale. And we that time, negative 14 is, oh, let's, let's see, if I actually were to solve s of t, we end up with 3.67 as our time. So at t equals 3.67, we stop going in the negative direction. And we turn around and we start going in the positive direction. And we go positive forever. How do I know? Because our s function continues up positively. Okay? Now, that's what's happening in our position function. Now, on our position function, we have some key points. We have the maximum position that we achieve, which is when our derivative equals zero. Derivative being the velocity. 
We have the minimum position achieved, or local min, um, which actually is the absolute min. This is a local max. And then we have the minimum position achieved, which it means our velocity equals zero. In order for the particle to turn around, to go from a positive moving direction to a negative moving direction, it first has to stop. So these are the points where our particle has to stop. Now, if you look at the graph of V, you can see these two points are right here. They are where V equals zero. The time cor is corresponding to the same, and the value of V is zero at these two points. Okay. Before this point, what does this mean? Our velocity has positive values. That's because we were moving in the positive direction. So we were going from zero, positive direction. So our velocity was positive. We hit a stopping point, and then we go in the negative velocities. All of these velocity values have negative signs. So because we have negative velocities, we're moving in the negative direction. Isn't that cool? Now, something else you can observe from this, these are positive velocities, but they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning you're slowing down and then coming to a stop. And then these are getting more and more negative, meaning they're becoming a larger speed. Speed, you ignore the sign. So you're getting faster and faster and faster and faster until you reach here, and then you start to slow down again. But you're going from a, um, but this is a negative velocity. You're still in a negative velocity because you're still in the negative direction, but you're slowing back down. So right here, this is the maximum speed that we achieve. He's also the point where our acceleration equals zero. Remember, the derivative over here equals zero at the local max and local min. The derivative of the velocity equals zero right here. And we can see that in the graph of the velocity, or graph of the acceleration, which is right here. Acceleration right here is where we stop changing speeds for just an instant. We, we don't make it faster and faster and faster. We don't start getting slower and slower. That's where we transition from speeding up to slowing down. The acceleration stops for just a split second because it has to start changing what it's doing. So initially, our accelerations are negative in nature, which means we are accelerating in the negative direction. But notice the acceleration becomes less and less and less and less until it becomes no acceleration, just for a split second. And then on the other side of that point, our accelerations are positive, which means we're accelerating in the positive direction. Okay. Now, remember, acceleration is not necessarily speeding you up. Acceleration has to work with your direction that you're moving in order to speed up. So initially, we are moving in the positive direction, but our acceleration is negative. So they're working against each other, which is why we come to a stop here. Then after we come to a stop, our acceleration is still in the negative direction, and we start moving in the negative direction. So we speed up. So our velocity speeds up. So we get faster and faster and faster. So we get faster and faster and faster until we hit somewhere around here. And then we start to slow down our velocity because we come to a stop. That's because our velocity or our acceleration is now positive. So our acceleration being positive is what slows us down to a stop. And then it continues being a positive acceleration. So we start moving in the positive direction. So you can see here, this velocity is positive. So that's when we are in, let's see, we're moving in a positive direction which is right here in our position function. There is lots of information we can draw from this, so I just connected a couple things for you. Hopefully that's helpful. Oh, I know one more, concavity. So here we are concave down, which means our second derivative, the acceleration, is negative. So right here is our inflection point. This is corresponding to our inflection point in our acceleration. So concave down, negative acceleration right here. Concave up positive acceleration. That's this part right here. Okay, I think that's everything I can tell you about in this, these three pictures in comparison of each other. I thought it was really cool and I wanted to show you the visual representation of each function. So, have fun, study hard, and I'll see you in the next video.